Hi everyone, Ryan Nagy, how are you doing? Back to talk a little bit more about the Feldenkrais Guild system and some of the ramifications of that system in relationship to the method, right? The, the Feldenkrais method itself, in relation to you as a practitioner, me as a practitioner, and the growth of the system, the development of new forms and that type of thing. Um, this is going to be relative. It's a it's a relatively abstract topic, but I'm going to try to you know really embody it with some good examples, and uh, I think I'm going to blow your mind as you as you go through and listen to this. Uh, and as always, if you have questions, uh, jot them down below. Whether you're listening to this on YouTube or on RyanNagy.com, um, many of you know. Uh, I think you know. I was a, I got a master's degree in psychology, num number of years towards a PhD. I've worked in research labs all over the United States, studied dynamic systems theory, uh, systems theory, and uh, taught for many years at the University of Utah and at San Francisco State University. And this topic is uh, kind of near and dear to my heart, and I think, I think you're going to find it very enlightening. Uh, yeah, but we'll see. So. Are you familiar with the difference between a hierarchy and a network? A hierarchy and a network. Because this is actually uh, this is a very big distinction and where a lot of the craziness is coming out um, from the Feldenkrais Guild system is that, um, you know, some of the guys from Americans, oh, you can't see me there. Do you need to see me? Maybe you don't. Some of the, uh, the gentlemen and ladies from the, from the San Francisco training have sort of set up this idea that they're trying to sell and promote that the, the Feldenkrais method is a hierarchy. So what is a hierarchy? Well, a hierarchy is a, is a way of organizing people's systems, ideas, so the information kind of flows downward through the system, right? So a lot of different examples, you know, this could be, say, the president of a country, right? This box represents the president of a country the president wants to go to war or get something done. So the president issues an order to the person below him. It could be a general, it could be the director of some, well, you know, whatever, FBI, and God knows what, who then gives orders to the people below him, who then gives orders to the people below him, and something comes out of that system, okay? So this could be, like I said, the president. It could be a CEO. Um, it could be, you know, the owner of a small business. Right, so it's a hierarchical in a hierarchical form of governance. Information flows down through the system, right? Now, and by the way, I'm not saying that hierarchies are bad and networks are good. I'm going to talk about networks in, in a second because they're actually interrelated. But this is a particular way of organizing people. Okay, it's a it's a way of looking at how organizations work. Now. Um, let's talk about a network. Let network for just a minute. A network is could be people working together. It could be websites. It could be a flock of birds. There's there's, it, there's a, lots of different ways of thinking about networks. But in a network, you have what's called a node. Okay, this is an autonomous, relatively autonomous individual actor of some sort. So if we were to think of the internet, it's it's uh, as a network. Uh, this is a web page. Let's say it's your, it's your web page, right? Now, it's not autonomous, right? But it's you control the website, and you could decide that you're going to link this website to another website over here. You could link to this website, another website. So it, it's an autonomous, it's an, it's, a, it's an entity that can create connections. Does that make sense? And also, it's an entity that can break connections. So you could create a link to a website, say you link to my a blog post or something, or, and then you say, well, I don't, I don't like that anymore. So you, you, you get rid of the connection, right? Autonomous agent. Now, networks are really cool and very important for a lot of reasons. Um, I, I'm simplifying things as much as I can, both based on my own understanding and then the, sort of the point of this uh, video, which is to talk about the Feldenkrais Guild system. Um, but, You know, one of the, probably one of the most influential biologists that you've probably never heard of is a woman by the name of Lynn Margulis, Lynn Margulis. I've never actually heard her name pronounced, who, she wrote some research articles, very well done, was ignored for many years. But she basically made the case that um, uh, 
um, the beginnings of human life, new life forms, came from networks of organizations working together. It's pretty well established at this point. So for example, let's just say this is a single cell organism. I'm gonna put some tails down here. Can you see that? Those are like little things. So this little guy is very good at moving. He can move around the primordial soup. He can you know, find new food sources, etc. But let's just say he's not, he doesn't have a very good system for digesting, right? So he can move very well, but he can't digest food. Um, now this bigger thing here, Let's just say it doesn't move as well, okay? But uh, it moves much slower, but it secretes an enzyme, and that enzyme is good at developing, uh, digesting food. So this little guy figures out that when, when he's near uh, this other organism, I guess they could both be she's, it doesn't really matter, they're, they're bacteria, so there can be male and female, or none of the above. I think it's none of the above, right? None of the above. Sexual reproduction hasn't happened yet with these guys. So this organism, is gonna find where this organism at because it's got an, uh, an, an enzyme that makes it easier for it to eat its food. And over the course of you know, hundreds of thousands of years, as the theory goes, um, these guys come together and actually form a new organism. That is, this guy kind of comes in, you know, they actually become one organism and they, cite, they sync their um, reproduction cycles and it's, it's, a, it's a new life form, okay? Now, I hope we don't have any biologists in the, in the, in the audience because you're gonna probably shudder at how I just explained that, I'm sorry, but it's, I'm just giving it out in rough forms. But this is, the, this is, a, this is an uh, example of nodes in a network coming together to form something new, okay? Now, here's the thing, here's the thing. This is pretty intense. M my view is a, a lot of the problems in the Feldenkrais community, especially in the, well, in the Feldenkrais Guild, if you're a part of that system, I'm not, is that they're trying to enforce a hierarchical orientation on something that A, isn't hierarchical, and B, that Feldenkrais was not really a part of. So do you remember that first video I put out a couple days ago? I said, uh, I said uh, that Feldenkrais trainers are being trained and practitioners are being trained, but not, not always what we think they're being what we what we think they're being trained for. Because my view is that a lot of the insanity that comes out of the system is because this. Well, let, let me let me just back up. Sorry, let me just back up. Let's just say that this is at the top here is Moshe, right? And here we've got oh I don't know. Let's just say it's David Zamak Barrison. He seems to think he's the he's an alpha male. And then you've got uh, I don't know Jerry Carson. Paul Rubin, uh, Dennis Leary, blah, blah, blah. Oops, Dennis Leary, VDL. Okay, so these guys are trying to say that, and not trying to say, but they're, they're constantly, David's constantly saying, and Jerry Cardin is constantly saying, oh, you know, when I registered the, the service marks on Moshe's behalf, or uh, Carson's got something on his website where he says, when Moshe made me a trainer, you know, when Moshe gave me the rights to be a trainer, well, that's not actually true, right? Carson, Moshe was dying and he needed some people to finish the Amherst training. And so he gave them, he said, hey, you know, finish the training for me. And, you know, and he didn't, Moshe never used the word Feldenkrais trainer, etc. And, you know, that may not seem like a big deal to you, but what's happening over and over again is these guys are trying to say that they're part of a hierarchy, right? They're speaking for Moshe. This is the way Moshe wanted it. You know, Moshe wanted a strong guild to protect his work, and I, David Berson, you know. Um, I, th I think the only thing we're missing from this story is maybe a, uh, you know, we need a burning bush. We need a burning bush, and we need two gold tablets, you know. And the, cold tab the, the gold tablets would have trademark signs on them, okay? So they're trying to kind of enforce this hierarchical organization on people, on the system. So, you know, the, you know, You've got your trainers, so I guess we can just say these are trainers. All of these are trainers, and these are assistant trainers, you know. And, you know, and then you've got the practitioners down here, and then you've got the public. And maybe that seems fine to you. Maybe you're, you're, you're cool with that, and if so, fine. I'm not saying that this is necessarily bad or wrong. I'm just saying to consider the implications of how this is set up. First of all, this link isn't quite true. Okay, they're spending a lot of time trying to say, oh, you know, actually, Barrison, I just saw, I'll take a screen capture of this. David has on his website, his personal website, original student of Moshe Feldenkrais. 
That's an original student of Moshe Kelton Christ. So he's the original student, right? And let's not forget, uh, we've got uh, Mia over here, we've got the Nabanyal and Shaba and Yochanan, we've got all kinds of people. But no, 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 David's the original student of Moshe, right? But, and you see that's, that's kind of important for him and these other people, based on how they set up, they, they want you to say, oh, I've got the power. You know, it flows from Moshe down to me, right? Now, so let's think about this a little bit deeper. So if you're a practitioner and you want to do something, you want to, let's say, teach the method. Or you're a group of practitioners and you want to teach other people Feldenkrais. Or you want to begin the process of learning how to do that. Well, can't do it, at least not according to these guys, right? Because, you know, you've got to work your way up the system. You spend five years and you become an assistant trainer. You spend 15 years and you become a trainer, and God knows if you're even getting, you know, most people that start the process don't finish it. Um, it'd be nice to have some hard data on that. The guild could do that, of course, because it's going to protect the public and protect the practitioners, of course, but we've never seen that data. Why not? Okay, so, so you got to work your way up the system. And then I saw recently uh, Jerry Carson. Sorry to pick on Jerry Carson or, or any of these guys. I just, you know, I, I read things and I got to go where the data takes me. but. He called himself a senior trainer. So now we've got to like put another block in here as trainers and senior trainers and blah, blah, blah. So it's, really, it's just basically inefficient. You've got to come up with a system. It takes 20 years. And then once you're at the top of this totem pole, as I said before, you know, what happens? Well, does it mean that you're competent at graduating other practitioners of helping people start their own practices? No, there's certainly no evidence of that. Does it mean you can do your own trainings? No, because you've got to have you know three other people in the room, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like it works very well. And I know it doesn't work to other people. And by the way, the reason I'm doing this, the reason I've been motivated to do this and all this came about was because, as I said, somebody deleted one of my posts from Facebook uh, from Feldenkrais practitioners around the world. Somebody else said, oh, it's a mistake. She shouldn't have done that. It's censorship. Um, I definitely agree it's censorship. I definitely agree that there's ideas that I have that other people in the community don't want people to see. But what I want to point out to you is that based on this system, it's not actually, it was not a mistake for her to do that. Okay, because this system is about obedience. Okay, so you've got somebody, she's in Brazil, she's organized a Feldenkrais training, she's a friend of, you know, a colleague at least of Jerry Carson, who was the director of that training. And, you know, maybe at this point she's got, she's got relationships with these people. She wants to become an assistant a trainer. She wants to do another guild certified training. I don't know exactly what, but in this system, you know, what do you do when somebody says, well, how dare you? You know, you're letting that Ryan in, you blah, blah, blah. Or, or oh, you know, the, the, the Jerry Carson approach. Well, oh, I can't even get a drink of water in my own house. How you betrayed me? Oh, my God. So, you know, they put pressure on her or other guild members have, or maybe someone from the FGNA board, and she deletes the link. But it kind of makes sense. If you want to be a part of the system, if you want to be a, win approval from these people, you kind of have to do what they want, if you want their approval, if you want to join this system. So my idea is just don't join the system. Do your own thing. And see, where it gets really interesting is doing your own thing is actually doing the Feldenkrais method. So let's think about, um, Dr. Feldenkrais. Let's think about Moshe. Let's think about the big MF. Moshe Feldenkrais. Uh, <laughs> I used to teach, uh, uh, I used to teach, was it eight hours a week, 10 hours a week? I don't remember. I used to teach a lot at a halfway house, a drug, uh, you know, drug rehabilitation place. I would teach three or four hours. They had these little, like, they had everybody in just groups. And I would teach three hours this day, four hours this day, four hours this day, and I did it for weeks. And Salt Lake City is a you know, relatively small town. You walk around, and I was walking around. You walk around one day, and there'd be this old beat-up car, and the guy would stick his hand out and go, Felton Christ! <laughs> it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right, so Moshe Felton Christ. Look, Moshe... Um, is an autonomous node, was an autonomous node. He was an actor. He could move without hesitation and without preparation in whatever direction he chose. So, you know, Moshe went from Israel, I mean, no, sorry, went from the Ukraine to Israel 
in Israel. He got a certain amount of education. He did, uh, you know, his karate stuff. He trained members of the Israeli Defense Force. As not, you know, so he created connections with people. Um, you know, then he went to France and just got his uh, PhD or whatever that was in part of uh, uh, whatever. And then he went to France and he went back to Israel. What I'm saying is, he was an independent agent, an independent node. Okay, and where this gets really interesting is that you know Moshe was developing his work. He was teaching classes at Alexandria and I, and then you know. A, a kind of normal, natural outgrowth of that is at one point he's like, wow, you know, I don't know how old he was, maybe his 50s or 60s, and he's thinking, you know, how am I going to start teaching people to do what I do? How am I going to get this work out here? Well, what did he do? Um, well, from what we can understand from the history is he worked with Mia Segal for a while. So he created a connection. I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to put Mia. So he's, he's working with Mia Seagal, teaching her how he does what he does. So, you know, there's, there's a communication back and forth, and I, I guess I should be more clear about that. I mean, there's back and forth communication in a, in a hierarchy, but the information, it's, you know, their order is slowing down. In a network, it's not always equal communication, but there's more opportunity for equal co-regulated uh, action, as my former advisor, Alan Vogel, would probably say. So. And then what happened after Mia? You know, Moshe, he was getting pretty good at this. He's like, well, I'm, I want to teach more people. He had a room that he could fit 12 people in. So he picked 12 of his students and he started teaching, teaching the work, right? And what happened to a lot of these people? So we've got, uh, I don't know, who can we can put? Anat, Shava, Shohav, you got uh, Ruthie, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> these people that worked Hang on. These people that worked with Moshe for many years, they kind of went out and started their own network, right? Doing their own thing. It's got, you know, bones for life. Mia's got with uh, Lenora, Leora, Leora Gaster. Got their mind body studies, right? So it's a network that spreads out. Okay? It's, it's an autonomous agent, it's, it's, you know, moving, growing, developing. But, or as we would say from the, the standpoint of the, uh, of the Feldenkrais Guild system, at least some of these people, these are the bad guys, right? Right, so you know, that is what you were saying, oh, these chicken shits, they want to go out and create their own version, well fine, fine with them, you know? Well, it seems to me that, you know, if this is how Moshe Feldenkrais developed, organically, as an independent agent, learning, growing, changing, reaching and grabbing information from wherever he chose, then that seems to me that, that might be a pretty good indication that it's pretty Feldenkrais, right? And the reason why this topic is so important to me, I'm kind of running out of space here. Um, I don't want to get another page, but let's just say, let's just say these are not, these are no longer one-celled organisms right here. We got three people here. These are all practitioners. They're getting together and they're going to create a, uh, low fee clinic. You see, this is happening. There's what, what was it? The Vital Human in Portland. There's a group in New York. I don't remember what the name is. The people get together. Practitioners get together. They share information, right, as equals, and they create something new. And you know, the, you see this boundary here. I, I didn't make it a. Uh, there's holes in it to show that it's porous. So these people can work together, and this part, or, or the, another person can say, "Hey, I want to join your Feldenkrais Center." Or later on, this person can leave. It, it, you know, it's groups of people coming together to form something new, a new organization, a new way of doing things, a new way of sharing information, a new way of getting the work out into the world, a new way of getting your work out into the world, whatever it may be. I mean, it seems to me that if it's good enough for life to be built on this planet, it's good enough for the Feldenkrais method. But again, what happens over here, right? Oh, no, 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 that's not Feldenkrais. You can't, no, no, no. Right, that's uh, shame on you, shame on you, right? So, but and, and this, it's, it's, a, it's a system property, right? This is what they're saying. We come from Moshe, you know, Moshe, I know what he wanted, I'm telling you and you must do it our way type of thing. Well, you know, they may have gotten away with it if it worked, but it doesn't actually work that much, does it? I mean, people aren't getting out of going out of guild certified trainings and feeling competent to practice. 
or even to begin practice. I mean, it's a very small majority. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? Well, I think it's part of this system. And I'll maybe make that in, in another case, in another, uh, ep uh, another episode, yeah, another video. But, you know, the Feldenkrais method is a network. It was built on network properties. People coming together, creating new forms of organization, and this, was, this is what works, okay? And another thing that I want to point out, which is, uh, which is also, I think, very, very, very deep, is I want you to think about this idea of why is, you know, why is there so much anger in the Feldenkrais? Why do people get so angry? Why do you say something in training? Some, you know, like, I said something on the Feldy form one time a few years ago, and Paul Rubin just wrote this line, just going on, just going on. My wife's a Feldenkrais trainer, and I'm just like, dude, fuck, like, what's the deal? And, you know, why is the guild so important to someone like David Bearson, Paul Rubin, Jerry Carson, Dennis Leary, etc.? And sorry, I'm just using those names. I can't put everybody's name down there. Uh, and you will notice that they're all basically from the San Francisco training. Well, these guys, their credentials come from the guild. Right? They don't have independent credentials. They're not known for the work that they've done, or the book that they've written, for being a physical therapist, for being a PhD, for being a researcher. Their, what little power they have comes from the organization they set up to give them power. So when you wonder why they go batshit crazy and start attacking people and hurling insults at people because they can't you know, get the emails that they want, and they can't, you know, they, they threaten to leave, and I'm blah, blah, blah. Well, that's where the, their power isn't of themselves, okay? And again, and the thing that's sad about it is they, you know, they are as constrained by this network as you are. Uh, in fact, as Paul Rubin says it all the time, well, I could have done this and that, I could have, you know, blah, 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 and like he's, he's somehow sacrificed himself for our good. I don't look at it that way. I mean, Bearson, Carson, I mean, they could have been independent people going out and doing their own thing, you know, making their you know, unavowed dreams avowed. Whatever that may have been, I have no, what, what, what could that have been? Maybe one of them you know, could have gone and worked with somatic, one of the somatic experiencers or learned about trauma or been a painter or written books, but you know, they're spending so much time within this hierarchy fighting people. No, no, you don't understand. This is, what, you know, this is the way most of you want it. And you know, the people down here are getting angry and upset. So um, it's a mess. It really is a mess. And there's a lot of, there are people on Facebook right now um, saying that, oh, well, you know, Ryan, there's always been hierarchies, there's always been monopolies, and, you know, there are founding fathers, they get to do what they want. Well, hey, man, that's fine. If you want to just, if someone wants to give up and just, you know, okay, you know, I'll just follow along, that's your choice. But I don't see how this has anything to do with the Feldenkrais method, and I don't see how that attitude has anything to do with the Feldenkrais method. To free yourself from internal compulsion, to be able to act as an independent agent, you know, this just doesn't cut it. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out, I keep saying this, there's one other thing. Somebody on was criticizing, uh, well not criticizing, but a couple of trainers were saying, well look, you know, Anat's got her trademarks, and you know, Mia now, she's certifying people, and my, my take on that is, so Mia, she's kind of creating her own little hierarchy, right? So she's at the top, and her, daughter Leora, and they're certifying people to do the work. But see, that's a much different thing. That's a hierarchy coming out of a network, and Mia and Leora, well, they're still alive. So they can choose to register their own trademarks and decide who can use their own trademarks. That's sort of a, you know, a normal thing to do. You don't have to do that, but that's, that's the way they're choosing to do it. Ruthie's got her little, you know, she's got her bones for life, and there's sort of a hierarchy there. And again, that's fine. And th this, uh, this Feldenkrais trainer was using that as a way to say, well, it's okay to what we did here. And you know what? No, it's not the same thing. Okay? Because they are live, and they're deciding how they're going to do their work. Okay? These guys over here, they're not speaking for themselves. They're speaking for a dead person. And that's why, I know it's made some people uncomfortable, that's why on, it's been a couple of years now, I was saying, well, how, how are these guys just not priests? You're speaking for a dead person, man. This is the way Moshe wanted it. He wanted a strong guild and blah, blah, blah. Really? So this is, to me, it's creepy. Okay? They're trying to make themselves a part of a, of a, of a hierarchy, and there ain't no hierarchy, man. 
Okay, Moshe's not there, he's over here. Like it is not. So they're just creating a little myth or a fantasy here. And I think that's why, that's where a lot of the craziness comes from. Um, it's sort of like in the old, you know, communist countries or something. It's the great leader did this and the great leader did that and blah, blah, blah. And there's all this propaganda. But people's shared experiences, their lived experiences, tell them something different, right? So I guess, you know, part of the reason I'm doing this is to let you know that actually, no, you're not crazy. If you feel uncomfortable with this, if it makes you feel nutty, if you feel like people are acting sort of against you, right? Is it just because you're paranoid? Does it mean that people are not out to get you? Um, it's okay. Okay. This has been a small group of people trying to enforce what limited vision they have, or sorry, what vision they had 30 years ago when they were in their 20s, a lot of them, right? When you were 27 years old or 28 years old, were you ready to create a new organization? You know, were you ready to train three years after your Feldenkrais training? Well, they did. And again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If I had the opportunity, I'd take it too. Well, why not? But the thing is, you don't need the service marks to do that. You don't need these guys, that's for damn sure. So anyway, take it for what you will, hierarchies, networks. Uh, if you have questions, leave them down below. Uh, and remember my video from a few days ago, it says, what do you want from the Feldenkrais Method? What do you want to create? Uh, on ryannagy.com slash Feldenkrais, a couple people, it was a former guild uh, president of the FGNA BOD that put something down and from somebody from uh, Portland, a member of one of the um, Feldenkrais low, fleet, free, low fee clinics put something down. So I'd love to hear your comments. All right, two-way communication, it's one of the benefits of the internet, Ryan Nagy. <clears throat> Hope you're doing great out there, bye.